Hello Pandas and welcome back to the Make Money Scrapping Metal Starter Kit mini-series. This right here is episode two, so there will be plenty of links in the description if you need a little hand finding the rest of them. Now this episode is just a quick and easy guide to how I identify different scrap metals to know where they go, as well as a basic pricing guide, but be warned that is not really that useful because the pricing will change depending on what the prices are doing at the time. It's only gonna be accurate for today and it's only gonna be accurate in Canadian and it's only gonna be accurate for me right here. You get the idea. But if you wanted a hand knowing which bin to put the scrap in, this one's for you. Now I've got a few examples over here on the bench. Now the only things you're really truly gonna need are a magnet and the angle grinder. If you don't have one of these, well, <laughs> it's going to be more difficult. And remember that PPE is never optional. So what I have here are a few different pieces and we're going to figure out where they go. The first thing, this big one, this magnet is going to tell you if it's made out of steel. This is all steel. Oop. Look at that. Now, I already recognized that this was aluminum because of the color right? But also the shape, the design, the weight, the sound. You just kind of get used to these things. And that's probably one of the most important things is just experience and knowledge. I can't give you that. Well, I can give you the knowledge, but the experience is going to come from you. Woo. So that we have aluminum. Now, which aluminum bin? Get that plastic out of there. Now, if you look here, this shape, this is extruded aluminum because it was clearly created by being pushed out of something like Play-Doh, right? So that's going to go in our extruded bin. Two nice pieces of extrude. Now, because this piece is really, really thick, and by thick, I mean greater than an eighth of an inch. So like a headphone jack, see if that's clearly thick, that makes this number one or prepared steel. So I'm actually going to get a better price for this. So when I bring them in, I'm going to put them in two different piles. Now those ones were easy, but it's not always easy. Look at this piece here. It's pretty heavy, right? And the color isn't the same as aluminum. But the magnet isn't sticking. That's because it's probably stainless steel. If it was aluminum, it would be a lot lighter. But if we want to be sure, see, it sparked a little, so that's not aluminum. Aluminum will not spark. So it sparks a bit, but it's non-magnetic. This is stainless steel, and that's good. That's a good price. Now, what about something like this? It would be nice if this was all brass, but it doesn't weigh very much. And if you look down here, there's like casting marks or sprue marks, and also there's like sort of a weird texture on it. That is not gonna be brass. Brass could be made into this shape, but it's just not a common device. And this is where the knowledge and experience comes in. This isn't usually made out of brass, but just to be sure, there is no yellow at all on that. And that's because it's actually going to be zinc, or more likely a zinc aluminum alloy. Pure zinc is not common. I suppose we didn't do the magnet test, but those, naturally those are steel. Now these pieces, the brass and the copper are pretty obvious, I would think. We can separate those fairly easily. These other chunkier pieces though, we can hope, but there's only one way to know. There you see, so that one has a bit of copper showing and that's necessary so they can plate the nickel on top of it. But this one, that bright, beautiful yellow, yeah. So this piece is brass and this piece is probably also zinc or well, alloy. How do we know that this is all zinc and not aluminum? 
Well, the only real test that we could do that would be definitive would be Zep Root Killer. I think it's super basic, and when you apply that, it will react to the presence of the zinc. Other than that, the best test you could do would be a, uh, a density test, or a water displacement density test, which would be just to, to test how much water it displaces and then weigh it and compare the two to find its density. That can be a little difficult to set up, but really the best way to know, besides getting used to its application, is just by the weight, the physical density. Once you've handled enough of these pieces, you'll just know, because this is far too heavy to be aluminum. I was hoping this was brass, but it's not. So the density means it's zinc. We better remove this, otherwise we're not gonna get clean brass. Now, here's an interesting one. This piece is too heavy to be aluminum. It's not magnetic. Okay, so it sparks. It's stainless steel. <laughs> That's really too bad, I was hoping it was pewter. But, it's a good thing we did the spark test, otherwise, well, I would have felt really silly waiting for it to melt in a uh, in my pewter pot. So, what else have we got here? How about this one? Is it gold? Well, let's think about its application, right? Is that likely to be solid gold? No. Now, of course, reading that, it says 100% stainless steel. We can determine. And the magnet. And the spark test confirm that. Oh, but some parts are not. Look at that. That is really, really magnetic. It must be the pins all throughout here. Now, that doesn't actually mean it's not stainless steel. I still believe it probably is. But the problem here is that the scrapyard is not going to do a complete analysis on every piece you bring in. They're just going to check to see if a magnet sticks. And if it does, they're not going to want to buy it as stainless steel. But this is likely... This is probably 316 stainless, but I'm not gonna get 316 price unless I can prove it. So unfortunately, it's going into the scrap bin. The other reason it's here is gold plating. How do you know it's gold plated? Well, it's gold color. See, gold plating is actually super difficult to fake and not as expensive as you might think. Yes, it's expensive to set up, but the amount of material consumed is not a whole lot. You can't brass plate things because brass is an alloy and you can't just dissolve that into an electrolyte and plate it onto something. You'd be either plating zinc or copper. You could try and stain it, but <laughs> this is likely gold plated. We're not gonna get any extra value. Sad to put it in the steel bin, but that's where it's going. What about silver? Hmm? You've probably seen these before little silver button on a contact. Well, there's only one real way to test that. This should turn bright beet red. There it goes, see? So that's silver. Just buy some of it, it's cheap. It doesn't last forever, unfortunately. Now here's another one. Can you guess what that is? It's titanium. We don't have a test for it. I just know it's titanium because it's a titanium arrow. We can try the spark test and see if we learn anything. No sparks. Goes through really easy, but it does not bend easily. Right, these are the only tests we can do. If it bent easier, it'd be aluminum, but I, I know better because of the application. <laughs> I wish there was a better test. This will be an interesting one to find a buyer for. How about these? Ooh, that was fun. 
scared. <laughs> I'm just having fun now. It went a cool purple. It still is. It's aluminum. How about this? Hmm? We can read it. Now I'm seeing more and more yellow as I turn it. So I was expecting this to be either copper or brass because silver plated stuff is usually plated onto a copper or brass plate. So I guess I have a brass plate. <laughs> a slightly scratched up brass plate. And the only others I can think of at the moment would be on a motor. You might want to scratch the windings before taking the time to separate them because they could be aluminum. And you'll be able to tell the copper color pretty easily if you scratch it. And then lead. You might think it's steel, but if you can't tell by the weight, you can always just bash it with a hammer or something, and if it makes a really easy indent. That's too soft, that's not steel, that's lead. Oh, and you could find magnesium. You probably won't. And please keep in mind there are different grades and categories for all of these, and you'll make a lot more money if you sort them appropriately. If you want to go through any of them in detail, I have a whole playlist with a video for each, so I'll link that in the description too. Otherwise, be sure to check out tomorrow's video where we'll go through tips to sorting and storing all different kinds of scrap metal. Until then, leave it better than you found it. Keep doing the thing. <laughs>